to summarize Pacific Rim in a few sentences. An epic story about the human race. There's a lot of crazy fantasy and huge action set pieces. Just a rock'em sock'em big visual banquet. If you want me to explain the entire movie, I can do that. But it'd probably be more fun to watch it. This is no longer a battle. It's a slow, painful surrender. And we can't surrender. These creatures coming out of the ocean whose intent is to ruin the human race. I am aware those are my rangers that die every time a Jaeger falls. Where you meet us in this story, it really is the 11th hour. The kaiju war has been waging for about 20 years, and we're really starting to realize that we're losing. Things have changed. We're not an army anymore. We're the resistance. This was the Alamo, a final stand against these creatures. You're really finding the world in a desperate place. So in response to that, we create these giant Jaegers to kick their ass. Initiating launch operations. The Russians control Cherno Alpha. It looks like a big tank. It's incredibly powerful. There's the Chinese Jaeger run by the Ways, the triplets. I think that'll visually be really exciting to see these three people piloting one of these Jaegers. A striker is the Mark V Jaeger. She's faster and more fluid and more agile than any other Jaeger. Gypsy Danger is the very special Jaeger. That's the sort of hero Jaeger. The Jaegers are incredibly powerful, manned by human beings. Quite fascinating pieces of equipment. Calibrating. One of the very original ideas that have grown from this movie is the way the two pilots and the Jaegers interact is through what we've come to call the drift. The drift is to have a link between two different bodies. In order for the two bodies to be able to act as one, they need to share memories, instincts, their fighting styles, and be able to become essentially one. A machine this large, the idea that one person could control the entire machine seems slightly too superhuman. The neural load to interface with the Jaeger proved too much for a single pilot. A two-pilot system was implemented. Left hemisphere, right hemisphere, pilot control. Two pilots engaged in neural bridge. We've created a world that is so far from our current reality that it's hard for us to really identify with. But actually having Guillermo's vision creates a very clear idea of what Guillermo has in mind. You're, you're, you're not. Even right. six bays is huge. It's definitely big where he gets to play with uh, all the toys that his uh, incredible imagination will allow him to fashion. If he directs a monster movie, it's not just monster movie, but something more. Yeah, I mean, whatever. OK, good. Okay. <laughs> who is that guy? Every take, he comes up to me and says something or other, who is it? He's passionate about this subject matter, and yet, at the same time, with his absolute genius eye, he's really the only choice for us. Is that the director? Oh, he's the director, yeah. A movie like this, we need to imagine the entire world. He uses as much imagination as he possibly can, pulling from dreams and nightmares, trying to get the audience to slip into a different world. React to no, yeah. There are two great genres. One is the giant monster movie, the kaiju movie. And the other one is the giant robot movie. In terms of spectacle and size, is a movie that encompasses both of those subgenres. It's going to feel like a very gritty, real exploration of what it would be like if we found ourselves under attack from monsters. So where would you rather die? Here or in a Jaeger? 
Gentlemen, your orders are to protect the city of two million people. Then let's go fishing. I wanted this movie to not be about a country saving the world. I wanted it to be the world saving the world. The story is more global. It incorporates so many different cultures and nationalities. We're all slightly different. It's very much an international cast. So I needed two Australians, a Japanese girl, two Russian pilots, Chinese pilots, an American pilot. All of them together are necessary to save the world. So we have Charlie Hunnam as the lead. Rolly is not a complex guy with many moving parts. It's a guy that has been struck by tragedy. In combat, you make decisions. You have to live with the consequences. The challenge is to find somebody that he would be compatible enough with that he would actually be able to pilot a Jaeger alongside. Back in. This is Marco Mori, one of our brightest. She wants revenge for losing her family. She wants to fight. She wants to be a part of the resistance. She ends up playing a key role in the fighting to save the world from the kaiju. Idris Elba, and he is the moral center of the movie. An incredibly strong character. The last man standing. Pentecost's main challenge is to keep everyone focused in, let's fight the kaiju. They're being ferocious, let us be ferocious. You ready for this? Charlie Day and Byrne Gorman, they're fantastic together. They are the resident experts. And it's an interesting twist on sort of the standard kind of scientist type character. Gottlieb is part of the research division with uh, Newton Geisler. We're unorthodox, eccentric, but we can't stand each other. You know, any further describing the actual science of it would only shine a massive light on how little I actually know about anything scientific. There you have it. You have a real story with interesting characters that you're going to follow that's punctuated once in a while with these giant, spectacular set pieces of robots fighting monsters. The word kaiju means monster in Japanese. Here's the monster, here's you, and you're just this little speck on his forehead. Some might say that they are our deepest fears made manifest. The kaiju is a classic Japanese genre. Giant beasts and monsters that have all kinds of different characteristics and shapes and sizes. We wanted to stick to the basic groups of kaijus that would be based on life forms that exist on Earth. If you can imagine a crocodile and a lizard, OK? Well, the lizard is the dinosaur and the crocodile is the kaiju. Huge, grotesque, much more fierce. The moment you saw them on the screen the first time, you knew that they were deadly. They were capable of destroying the Jaeger. I'm always struck by the creatures that Guillermo creates. I think you're certainly going to look at uh, Guillermo's kaiju and say they're, they're pretty damn cool. There's something very pure and very full of love in monster movies and even more so in kaiju movies. You just love the creatures, and giant robots as a cherry on top. Let's do this together! In order for you to understand what these robots are doing, you have to understand what the human beings are doing within that head. The Guillermo made the Compod in its actual size, practically. You are using this real physical effort to make this robot move and fight. Action! We rigged the entire sets to vibrate, to shake, to give you the real perspective of what it would be to be inside that robot. Every movie has to have a portion of analog practical effects to really convey the sense of physical reality of the film. In Pacific Rim, we built the head of the robots, and the resulting set between the rig and the construction was about four stories high. This entire set would shake 
and uh, would be able to drop 15 feet really rapidly for the drop of the head. The actors were in for a ride. It was like a little amusement park simulator. The easiest thing would have been to put green levers on their arms and their back and their feet and have the actors have a complete free movement. But I felt you needed something with resistance. So we had a piece of machinery that was a couple of tons in weight in their backs and in their legs and in their arms. You've got a suit on, you've got a harness underneath. Your feet are on these platforms that actually move the robot's legs. While they pour 200 gallons of water on us a minute. We needed to waterproof incredibly deadly, dangerous currents of uh, electricity. I invented a torture machine. I thought the great thing about the fights would be for them to exist in a larger cockpit like a pilot in a tank in World War II. If you put them in a small thing, they, it, somewhat it feels snug and it feels safe. But if the piece of the walls are being torn, if the floor is being shaken, if the windshield, so to speak, is smashed, all these things are give you an interaction that is more immediate and visceral that they would be able to react to the impact. So every time they were fighting the kaiju and they would throw a punch, the whole set would throw that punch with them. And when they were being hit by the kaiju, the whole set would rock backwards with them and really, really shake them. I really don't know what any of those guys were talking about. I think they're just really soft, to be honest, because I didn't think it was that bad. A lot of this film is gonna come to life in post. After we all leave is when really Guillermo's gonna start doing the majority of the work on this film and put this world together. We're very fortunate that you have Guillermo del Toro and marry that up with the wizards at ILM. I wanted a company that would take this movie and never get bored with it. And I wanted very much for ILM to be constantly invested. I didn't want a movie that was technically right, but a movie that felt passionate. This is sort of new territory. That was a big part of the appeal to me, that uh, this isn't a sequel and it's not an adaptation. It's original material. <laughs> oh my God. We really want the animated portions to be as memorable as real. Let's face it, the two characters that are most outstanding in a movie like this have to be the robots and the monsters. You have to love them both. The world that Guillermo's created and the richness of these characters and the story that he's told, I just think it's really gonna resonate with audiences. All of those elements that audiences love about Guillermo's voice, you're gonna see here. So hopefully people will come away from this as if they've just been punched in the face. You know, they've stepped into this world of depth and terror and they've stepped out just white-faced. You feel the joy in this movie. This movie was made by people who love monsters and giant robots for people who love monsters and giant robots. I tried to make it a movie that resurrected a spirit that I don't think exists in movies these days. This sense of not of a war movie, but an adventure movie is gonna be unlike anything you've ever seen before.